Hi everyone, thanks for clicking. Having analysed how the individual and mixed relay races were won, in today's video we're going to be analysing which shoe brand won the battle out in Tokyo in the Olympic triathlons. I think it's a really interesting topic as unlike a lot of their other equipment, a lot of the top triathletes don't actually have shoe sponsors and are free to test out and switch up which shoes they run in. Therefore, the shoes that these athletes are wearing tend to offer good insight into which magic carbon shoes are the fastest rather than which shoe brand has the deepest pockets. At the risk of sounding like a boring teacher, it's worth mentioning that correlation does not necessarily mean causation. Many factors influence how fast you can run a 10k at the end of an Olympic triathlon, your shoes being just one of them. Ultimately, if you put Christian Blumenfeld or Flora Duffy in a pair of these bad boys, I'm sure they'd still be putting out some annoyingly fast times. Right, so on with the analysis. I thought that since I've gained a few more subscribers, I'd try and add a bit more personality to my videos. So anyway, here's a spreadsheet I made by endlessly staring at all the athletes' feet. Using this data alongside the results from the individual races, there are a few interesting insights we can take away. First up, you've got the quantities of each shoe used. I think this one is actually quite interesting because over half of the field aren't committed to wearing a certain brand. So this breakdown is basically showing you which shoes athletes think are the fastest. As you can see, Nike is still pretty dominant with 50% of the men's and women's field choosing to run in the Nike Vaporflies or the Nike Alpha Flies. Vincent Louis and Tyler Mislawchuk are the only two that spring to mind as being sponsored by Nike. I don't think this is a huge surprise, but it does show that the Vaporflies particularly is still the standard by which all other brands are judged and measured. In second place in both the men's and women's, in terms of quantity, are the Asics Metaspeeds, which appear to have taken quite a big bite out of Nike's market share this year. Had this race taken place in 2020 as originally planned, I think you would have seen almost all of these ASICs runners turning out in Vaporflies. Again, it's hard to tell exactly who is and who is not sponsored by ASICs, but apart from Mario Mola and Leone Perio, I think the vast majority have chosen the ASICs Metaspeeds completely on their own accord without any sponsorships. From reviews I've read, the Metaspeeds are supposed to be a bit firmer compared to the Nikes, which explains why they appear to be quite popular over the shorter distance where comfort and cushioning is less of a factor. It's worth pointing out as well that there are technically two different models of the Metaspeeds, each supposedly designed to help different types of runners go faster. To put it in very simple terms, you have the Metaspeed Edge, which is geared towards cadence runners who run faster by increasing their leg turnover to take more steps, and the Metaspeed Sky, geared towards stride runners who run faster by taking bigger steps. It was extremely difficult to tell who was using the Edge and who was using the Sky, as both models look almost identical, but I have managed to work this out for the faster runners at least, and we'll go over that in a minute. In third place, and greatly helped by the seven triathletes who wore them in the women's field, were the New Balance fuel cells. Worn by both silver medalists in the individual races, although I believe Alex Yi and George Taylor-Brown are sponsored by New Balance. Surprisingly, in fourth place in terms of quantity, is the On Cloud Boom Echo. However, again, a lot of those who wore the Ons appear to be sponsored. Notable wearers include Max Studer and Nicholas Spirig, both with top 10s, and Javier Gomez as well. There are a lot of other models used too, although only by the odd person. You had a couple of Hokers in there, a couple of the Adidas Adi Zeros, then a single pair of the Feelers Carver racing shoes that I didn't even know existed, a pair of Puma's Nitro Deviates, a pair of 361 degree flames too. On a side note, I'm not sure who names these shoes, but I'm certain it's the same person who just picks three cool sounding random words and strings them together. Moving on to the actual running times, the dots on these graphs show the average time run in each shoe and the line represents a spread of times run in the shoe, extending down to the fastest time run and stretching up to the slowest time. I've removed Matt Sharp's time for Canada as he was basically a domestique from his law chuck and ran a slow time relative to the others. The shoes with a low number of users were helped out a lot in this metric as a single quick run meant a low average, but it is still interesting that some athletes ran very good times in some of the less popular shoes Alex Yi putting out the second fastest run split in the New Balances, Vicky Holland in the Hokers, Katie Safiras as well in the 361 Flames, Manuel Messias in the Pumas, and Brownlee and Connix both running well in the Adidas shoes. I think it's worth pointing out too that the on shoes didn't do too badly on this metric. I've heard some mixed reviews on them, but Studo, Gomez and Spirig didn't seem to be hindered by them at all. Comparing the ASICs Metaspeed and the Nike Vaporflies, and in both the men's and the women's, the Metaspeed comes out on top, recording faster average times and also beating the Vaporfly on the fastest time recorded. Particularly on the men's side as well, you can see that all Metaspeed wearers ran under 32.15. I don't think we can read a huge amount into this because if you'd swap the Metaspeed and the Vaporfly wearers, I'm sure the fastest runners would still run the fastest. But I think what we can take away from this is that the athletes like Blumenfeld, Duffy, Van Riel and McDowell, who proved to be the best runners and are clearly doing something right in their training and preparation, decided to go against the consensus and choose the Metaspeeds. I think this is a definite win for ASICs, especially since a lot of those just mentioned were using Vaporflies not too long ago. 
Our final bit of analysis looks at the top 10 fastest run splits from the individual races. The big standout for me on this one, and also something I noticed whilst watching the race, was the sea of red meta speeds in the lead run groups. I mentioned earlier that there were two different meta speed models, the edge and the sky. I would have put money on a lot of the athletes being cadence runners and therefore used the edge meta speeds, but on closer inspection it actually looks like all of those who featured in the top 10s were using the sky version. Even Mario Mola, who I would have guessed was the perfect example of a cadence runner, was using the Metaspeed Skies. Some other notable takeaways are the new balances taking both the silver medals in the men's and the women's. The Vaporflies didn't exactly do bad either. Hayden Wilde and Rachel Klammer both using Vaporflies to run the third and fourth fastest run splits. There's also a couple of Alpha Fly appearances in the top 10 from Eden and Hayes. The Ons as well I was very surprised at, taking the ninth and seventh fastest times. The Adidas Adizero Adioses and the Hoka Rockets also featuring two. So whilst the Nikes and the Asics seemed to dominate, there was also a lot of diversity in there too. I hope you don't feel as though you just sat through a school lesson. In my opinion, I think the individual races were definitely a win for the Asics Metaspeed. Not only did they have the second highest usage, but pretty much everyone who wore them ran very well. Let me know if you agree down in the comments below though, and also if you've tried one or more of these shoes, what your opinion is on them. I currently use the Vaporflies, but I think I might try out the Metaspeeds after seeing so many of the top runners perform so well in them. Thank you very much for coming to my TED Talk and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much if you did make it to the end of the video and also a thank you to the 28 of you who have subscribed so far. It's really cool every time someone new comes on board. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing for more triathlon content in the future.